Hello, my name is Paul and welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. In this video, I'm going to give you a behind the scenes look on how I use ConvertKit to send my automated emails, to send my newsletter, and really um, build sales funnels that sell my digital products online. In this video, it's gonna be focused much more on the strategy, there's a lot here and I won't be able to show you how I've put this all together because that would involve quite a lot of detail. The video would probably be about five hours long. I will say that the best resource I can recommend is Brennan Dunn's Mastering ConvertKit course. It's a course I took in last year in 2019 that really helped me to learn a lot about what you can do with ConvertKit like some of the stuff that I'm going to show you. So that's a fantastic resource that I highly recommend. So that's where you can go if you want to learn how to do all this. I hope this video will give you some ideas on what's actually possible with ConvertKit and, and sort of how I'm using it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. So ConvertKit is the tool that I use when you sign up via a form on my website, like this one. If you get this pop-up, you wanna download my free blueprint and training, you can put in your name and email, and this will then go to ConvertKit. And so you get put into what's called a visual automation. So when you click, you know, sign up using that form, you get tagged with this tag, resource PB, which stands for Productivity Blueprint. And then basically I have my a visual automation here set up to do a number of things. First thing it does is if you're already on my list, it removes you from another automation that you might already be in because I don't want people to receive too many emails at once. It removes a tag, which in this case is called newsletter, because I'm about to send you some emails, um, like a sort of a course and a sales pitch. Again, I don't want you to receive my newsletter. So it actually removes that tag, and it sets a custom field called next offer to 7DPP, uh, which is... Um, Basically, a field I use in ConvertKit to say this is the next thing that they need to be pitched on. And then finally, it adds them to a, another automation called Course PB 3 pvs So this automation has just added them to this second automation, uh, which looks like this. And this is where I send people um, a number of emails, Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3, and so on. Now, what I learned taking Brennan's Mastering ConvertKit course is the ability to score people based on their engagement in your emails. So when you first come into this course automation, your score PB field is set to zero. So it's just kind of reset, it goes to zero. You get the first email and we wait 24 hours. Now in the first email, I actually have a call to action, which is you can complete a short worksheet. That's actually a kind of a, a form that I've set up in Google Forms. And if people fill that out, they will get tagged by Zapier um, with this tag course PPT L1 complete. It means they've completed that lesson. That means they can kind of fast track their way through the course and get lesson two straight away. Um, so it's a nice way to number one, increase the engagement on emails and allow people to go through the course at their own pace. If after 24 hours they haven't completed that worksheet, they will get forced through and sent the second email uh, anyway. And then I use some uh, liquid coding here to basically um, increase their score, so that PB score, that gets incremented by one. So that's a really nice way that you can actually score people based on engagement. So I do something similar here in lesson two. I have these links that people can click. And this is really useful because I can actually um, say, you know, what are you interested in? What do you want to learn about in terms of productivity? And based on the links that are clicked, number one, it's gonna score them. So it's gonna increment their score again from maybe one to two. So I know that they're a little bit more in engaged. The other thing is I can um, set ConvertKit so that when they click one of these options, it actually updates a field in their record that says this is what they're interested in. So if you click number one, it'll say this person is interested in technology. I can use that later on. So when I go back to my um, main sales automation, you know, they're going to get some nurturing uh, material, they're going to be nurtured through a sequence, and then eventually they will get a sales, go into a sales funnel. Um, so firstly, they will go into a hot or a cold sequence up here based on how engaged they were in the email course. So you can see if their email score or their score engagement was more than two, they'll go into the hot sequence and then they'll go into the sales pitch. If it's less than two, they'll go into a cold sequence, which generally just takes a bit longer. They get nurtured a little longer and then get the sales funnel later on. And then in the sales funnel email, that is where I can start to use the links that I had set up before. So that if somebody clicked that link to say they were interested in technology, I can customize the content of my email to say, um, my productivity toolkit is going to help you learn more about your technology and your tools um, so that you can achieve this you know, desired result. 
And so what I really wanted to highlight here is that based on the engagement that people will take on your emails, you can score them, but you can actually then use that information later to personalize the emails. So if they didn't click technology, maybe they said they struggle with building habits, they will then get a different sentence that talks about how to build better habits and that kind of thing. So it's a really nice way to personalize the emails based on what that subscriber has told me about themselves. What I'm also doing is using another tool called Write Message to then personalize the content on my sales page. So based on these segments that I have uh, set up, so I've said, you know, what do you, what do you struggle with? I'm, I struggle with um, technology, habits, or maybe just having too much to do. I can then use that data and I can change the content on my website to appeal to people based on those different needs. So in this case, if you struggle with technology, the headline of the sales page will say, you know, learn how to master your tools and, and supercharge your productivity. However, if they are interested in or they struggle with building habits, it'll tell them that they can learn to build the right habits and things. And so this is, again, similar to what I did in the email before, this is how I can take what the subscriber has told me and personalize my content, personalize my messaging to make sure it appeals to that person. And this will hopefully really speak to the person that is reading. And then finally, once people have gone through my sales funnel, they've been pitched on a product, they get tagged with a couple of things to say that they've been pitched. Eventually, they get added to my newsletter tag as well. And uh, they, uh, their next offer is updated in this case. And they will actually get a survey email later if they didn't purchase. Um, they'll be surveyed on why they didn't purchase. And then actually, my, my weekly newsletter that I send basically just goes out. I use the broadcasts feature in ConvertKit. So I say, uh, like this one that's actually queued to go out tomorrow, this one will go out to anyone that is tagged with newsletter. Um, oh, sorry, that one's already been sent. Oh no, let's have a, oh, let's unschedule it. There we go. Um, so this newsletter will be going out to anyone that's tagged with um, newsletter. That means it doesn't go to everyone on my list. All those people that are still going through onboarding or they're going through a sales funnel right now, they will not get my weekly newsletter, but they will eventually when they complete that onboarding and sales funnel. Uh, it's a really nice way to make sure I don't overwhelm people with too many emails. So hopefully this video has been useful. Hopefully it's just given you a little bit of an idea of the kind of thing you can do with ConvertKit and kind of what I do in the background on my website. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below and thank you very much for watching.